So if you've been following along, you will remember that I brought home 14 sticks of the six inch channel iron here to build our sawmill trailer out of. And if you're also following along the last couple videos on this subject, we've kind of bounced around a little bit, you'll see where I'm grinding a bunch of stuff off of there. So this was the price of free on this project. So all this channel iron, it had angle iron welded to the bottom of it. This was actually used for racking in an HVAC supply house uh, about two and a half hours north of me. So ended up our company pulled it out of there and uh, my boss thought we could use it to make boiler skids and whatnot and then they realized how much labor it was going to take to actually cut all that angle off of there. So let's get to the first cost of ferial. First cost is your time. Now for me personally I never I never figure in my time for the price of a project for myself. I just, it's all sweat equity to me, and I think that's what it is for most of us. So, so far, I cannot tell you how many hours I have actually grinding off all that excess metal that would be in the way of building what we are building. It's hours. I'll come out one night and grind one side, you know, in the hour or so I have some nights after work to get things done and uh, come out the next night and grind the other side off, come out the night after that, cut things to length. It takes time. Now, if I had nothing to do but this all day long, that'd be totally different story. It'd be, be no problem. I could uh, get out here, probably get most of it done in a day or two as far as cutting all that stuff off to make it usable. So your time, that is the first cost of free is your time. And you know, I think that's really all the cost of free. The next cost of free is the hidden expenses when you get something mechanical. I've got a 660 Grizzly back there that I've got to rebuild the uh, rear end and everything on. So that's the price of that, but it's still a hell of a lot better than going out and buying a new machine. So they're just stuff like that. When we built the forge press, those 12-inch uh, I-beams I got, they were free. Same source, but uh, I had 26 feet of I-beams that I got to cut down with a 4-inch angle grinder because I hit concrete or something in one of them, not paying attention to my metal cutting saw. So that really made things so much fun. But that was another time when I've had many, many nights into cutting that stuff up and making it usable. Now this isn't to whine about getting free stuff because I tell you what, to be perfectly honest with you, if this wasn't given to me, if that I-beam wasn't given to me, things like that, I would not have most of what I have. I just, I'm like a lot of you folks, the money's just not there. When you're raising a family and you have a mortgage to pay, there are things that take precedence. And uh, that's the other cost of free. And I guess that one's going to be time. Yes, the time it takes to complete a project while you're a cheapskate like me waiting to get stuff for free. I will put projects off for years until I can scrounge enough stuff to make it happen. The sawmill trailer, that is a really good example. I've wanted to build one since I brought the mill home, but everything that's always held me up, I, well, I've had that sawmill for five years, so it's taken me five years to finally find the right deal on material. Free. So it took me five years to find free material to build this sawmill trailer. And it's probably going to take me another five years to cut all the grinds off. So I guess that adds the other cost of, uh, of time. Really time. You guys noticing a theme here? Big theme. Big, big, big theme. So just about a lot of stuff we've done here. We've done on the cheap. We've done on the fly. But I, I guess maybe... Maybe we should talk about the benefits of getting stuff for free. And benefit number one would probably be money in your pocket. Well, I've saved a lot of money, a whole lot of money over the years, getting materials, scrounging stuff so that I can build this stuff for free. Good example of that forge press. That's a 37 ton forge press. Something like that probably cost me six, eight grand, maybe a little bit more. And that's built pretty damn stout, if you guys followed along to see that. The, uh, another one, um, this trailer right here, this is going to save me a lot of money. And to be honest with you, it's going to be heavier duty than pretty much anything I'm going to buy. I have not seen any sawmill trailers built out of six inch channel iron, unless somebody's made them themselves. So 
when you're weighing out the cost of getting free material to use it, I, I find that uh, the time factor, it comes into play when you really need something right then, but at the same time, when you're done with it, if you have any basic skills on welding or grinding, a whole lot of grinding, or just about anything like that, a lot of times you can make something better than what you're going to buy manufactured from most places just because time is money, right? Except for us. Except for people like us. Time is not money, I guess. But, uh, so before we get off the rails too much, I've just noticed a lot over the years. To be honest with you folks, if I go and spend money on something to build it or something like that, that is always a last resort for me. Um, it just is. I don't, uh, we just don't have the disposable income to do that kind of thing with. But, and I'm fine with that too. I honestly, I've learned so much building my own stuff over the years, fixing my own things. Somewhere along the line, this modern fast paced world, we have totally lost sight of the things that we can do with our hands. And I kind of, the more I learn how to do things, and the cooler the stuff is that I make on here, the more I, I really make peace with this having to do stuff on the cheap and realizing that, hey, I'm getting something a little bit better than I would have if I went out and spent a few grand. And that's really important because that's just, it's just hard to do. So I guess another good point for us to bring up is what is the secret to getting free stuff? I mean, how do you go about getting free shit all the time? Not that I get free shit all the time. I guess it should be called scrounging, because that's usually what I do. Scrounge, 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 and then some more scrounging. My trick to getting stuff that I get is just be an annoying pain in the ass about your projects at home. You don't have to say that you're looking for this or that, but I'll find wherever I am. I will talk a little bit about to anybody who will listen about what I'm building, what I plan to build, and that I'm... Now I happen to be looking for materials, and believe it or not, a lot of times somebody will say, hey, I know a guy, or yeah, I've got some of that stuff out back that's just sitting there, just going to rust away. Why don't you uh, go ahead and help yourself and get it out of here? It'll do us both some good. I tell you, you guys remember the coal stove videos, and the ones where we uh, restored the coal stove, put it in, got it into operation, that's what I heat my house with now? I got those, I got that stove basically mentioning in a video a long time back that I was interested in switching from wood to coal. And I had a viewer up in Maine, thank you, Loyal, hell of a good guy. But I had a viewer up in Maine who said, who sent me an email, said, hey, I'm willing to do a little trade. I need some boiler parts. And I've got two Vermont Castings coal stoves here you can have. I'm in business. So it took me 16 hours drive up and back total. And uh, 16 hours of driving, a few hours of cleaning it up, some brick work in it, and I'm heating the house with coal. That saved me, well, around here to buy a coal stove with that capacity, it's about sixteen to eighteen hundred dollars for a hitzer here, and I had maybe hundred bucks in diesel going up and getting it. I had, I think, six or eight dollars in black stove polish, and I probably had 20 bucks in fire brick and fire cement. That's a heck of a trade-off. Yes, it cost me time. Yes, I had to go get it, but that saved me a lot of money. You know, I should be rolling in it and the money that I save on stuff, but um, that's always been my trick is just anybody who's willing to listen, you just talk about your projects a little bit. You know, don't go acting like you're just looking for stuff to be handed out to you all the time because that's really not the way it is. I do a lot of trading for stuff, too. You know, I, I've helped with a lot of people's furnace troubleshooting or their boilers, things like that, in return for this or that, which I've kind of gotten away from that a little bit over the years. Now I just kind of sit back like a vulture and circle the metal carrion that's all over the North Country where I live in hopes that it just falls over and nobody wants it. And fortunately for me, that happens a lot. And another thing you can't be afraid of, when you're working with free stuff and you, you just have this project in mind that you have to build, don't overlook stuff that you can repurpose. Now, it's almost becoming a fad type thing, but 
You know, that's what your Depression era people had to do to survive, and a lot of people before that, because the raw materials just weren't available to everybody. And it was a lot harder in those days to get the things you needed to build anything. Today, I mean, think about it. Today, we're so spoiled. We get out our smartphones. We can order just about anything we want at the Internet. You go to any decent-sized town, there's usually a steel supplier. Yeah, it's going to cost you money, but it's available. So you think how people used to have to do things... And uh, we're, we're pretty lucky. We're pretty spoiled. You didn't have Craigslist back then. You didn't have Facebook Marketplace. There's just, we're spoiled. But uh, look at other pieces of equipment. You know, if you know somebody's got a bunch of dead farm equipment, a bunch of hay binds, things like that, things like I have out here in the back 40, look around. A lot of times those people will be happy to get rid of that stuff. But you wouldn't believe how much steel, structural steel, is in old farm equipment that you can cut up and use to make just about anything you want out of. And it's just kind of neat. So I guess the point of all this is free is not free ever, but free is a lot more economical just about always. It helps your creative process. It makes you better at what you're doing because you have to get creative to make do, to make something work that you're, that you really want to get working. It's not just plug and play. It never is when you're getting free stuff. Once in a while you might get lucky, but a lot of times you have to sit there and figure it out. You have to have a vision in your head of what you want and how you want it to work. And then you have to get creative about how you get from this pile of useless scrap to this valuable tool that you have now made and that's where the fun part is um, a lot of people get lost in the idea that it's work it's work it's work it is work grinding this metal off of this stuff it's no fun it's no fun at all it's a pain in the ass it makes you just want to do horrible things but the fun part for me is taking this this pile of junk and turning it into something usable for myself and knowing that I didn't have to take away from the family budget or something my kids need or my wife needs and I was able to build with without affecting any of that and that's really important to me I mean at the end of the day that's more important than anything that we're doing as shop projects I tell you what I know a lot of people in this world they don't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, but I tell you, they got every brand new gadget there is. And meanwhile, they can't pay their bills and their kids go without. I've seen that a lot, and it kind of infuriates me when I see that. I've seen that a whole lot, especially around here. Dirt track racing is popular here. You see a lot of guys in the race pits who can hardly feed their kids, but boy, they can spend money on race day. You know, And that's not to preach or anything like that. It's just one of those things that's kind of ingrained where uh, I never want to see the wife and kids go without something they need for me to have a toy or a gizmo or a tool I need. So I, I'm kind of at a point in life if I can't build it, well, I don't know how much I need it. But uh, so I guess maybe that sounds a little preachy, who knows. But um, like I said, to my way of thinking, if I can build it, I'm going to build it. And if I can't build it, well, we'll, we'll make do some way. But uh, Anyway, I guess, I guess you guys have heard enough of me going on about this one, and I was wondering what to do for a video, and this kind of popped into my head, because I can only so, show so much footage of running a 4-inch grinder to cut welds, and uh, I know I wouldn't sit through something like that, and the ones of you who do, you do it because you're pretty loyal to the channel, I guess that's all you could say for it, so... Anyway, have a good night, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this one. I will catch you on the next one.